I decided that instead of a Corvette or something for my midlife crisis, I decided to make this record. And I thought, okay, well, if you're going to do it, I want to get the best people for the job. So I contacted Nolly because when we work together with Transcendence, I mean, um, I love him. And I think he's the best at what he does for what I do. I said to him, where would be the best place for you to record? He said, well, Mono Valley in Wales. Uh, Kellamy said that there's a Gretsch kit here, correct? Yeah, there's an old, old Gretsch. That's the one that we're going to use for Morgan. Okay. Yeah. So he's, uh, he was really excited about that. He's like, oh, it's an old Gretsch kit. Perfect. What I wanted to do and what the ideas that were starting to bubble to the surface for Empath entailed a level of musical proficiency that not a single person could do. I needed to have the perfect person for each role. I think we just kind of get drawn into each other's orbit and then before we know it we're all stuck in a building together for 10 days trying to figure out what it is. Okay, let's go to number two please. It's so fucking cool, man. Oh, I love it. I mean, for years I've I've had people that have been confused about my output musically, and they say, we're confused why you now have put out something that's like a country record. Or, you know, it was metal, but this one's not metal, and, and we're confused by that. And I think I've always been myself confused by that, because I don't know anybody that's one thing, you know? it's I always found the equivalent of listening to nothing but heavy music, the the same as just eating the same thing for every meal, right? Like anything, if you have it for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, you know, before bed, you're just gonna get sick of it. And I find that way about music. sitting in that room listening to the, the, the drum sounds and every part of the process is just is a pleasure. Let's just, if we could even do it with like a clasp or something, just, okay, cool. just like even yeah. if it's just once, just to sort of make it seem like, oh yeah, yeah we knew that yeah. was different. You know, and he started sending me videos of, of the guys that he wanted to play on the record, you know, because uh, Morgan I've known forever, but then to hear what uh, Anoop and Sam bring as drummers is breathtaking. I think that this is incredible. I can I can already like see in my mind's eye where this album is, is headed and, and how unbelievable it's gonna be when it's done and, and when you have that vision, which you know clearly he does, then it's just like, you know, coloring in. Uh, maybe don't go chromatic, just a la la la. It's a no no no, just a la la la. Yeah. Same. <laughs> Devin sent me 10 songs, and I loved every one of them. I had started to transcribe the, the bass parts that Devin laid down, and then I also added my own embellishments. We used those transcriptions here when we were doing the recordings, and Mike also offered a ton of input as far as parts that he heard. It just made for some really interesting, creative, and unique parts that I hadn't experienced before as far as writing goes. <laughs> the music is a direct reflection of where you're at. So whatever you put in is going to come out. In a society where perhaps Empathy is viewed as a weakness. You have to put yourself in other people's shoes in order to have any degree of compassion for people who think differently than you. Empath became 
that analogy. So the music, as a result of that, is a lot of different things. But whatever it is, it's I went full bore on it. So when it's meditational, it's the quietest thing we can possibly do. When it's orchestral, it's orchestral. When it's metal, it's the best metal drummer I could find for the job. And then you and you do that while you're continuing. And then it goes into that. Keep, keep the feet going. And after it goes into that. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And maybe even if you could, in the midst of the swell, catch that one snare that's missing. Look at See? I know. But I was just but watching it happen, man, because I'm like, I was looking for his face to change. He's just like. <laughs> and then he goes to the kick, he's like, and I was just like, what the fuck? Man? Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's so, it's surgical, man. It's like that, the effect of that is just like, the thing that I love so much about the control is it makes it really scary. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. If it's out of control, it's like, you know, you're just kind of like, ah, oh, right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's human. Yeah. But when it's fearless, yeah. and you hear that control, mm -hmm. the effect of that is just like, oh, no. No, we know. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, dude, I'm still fucked up. The music evolves unconsciously as a result of the process. An empath uh, has been indicative of a really big personal shift. The way that I wanted to make records was starting to be um, sidelined by the success that I was having with the DTP band. If you notice at the end of Transcendence, there's a little tiny picture of me uh, with a coconut, and then there's dolphins, and I'm like really psyched. And I realized that because towards the end of Transcendence, I took my family on a vacation and we went to some warm place, and I was just, I was just like, why am I? Why am I doing this? Why do I want to tour for 11 months of the year? Why do I want to be away from my son and my wife? And when Transcendence was finished, and I realized even looking through the art, I'm like, okay, so it's the rain, except for I'm happy there. And it's almost like that's where I want to go, is I want to go to that place. I don't want to, no matter how successful this could be, it's, it's useless if you're unhappy. I like his mind, I like the fact that he's so creative as he is, because I can see his brain is just and everything is happening like that. And the studio is fantastic and every single person in his house has been just amazing. I think it's one of, I would say, probably the most joyful recording sessions that I have ever done. I mean, we are in an old house in Wales. There's people sitting in different rooms and everyone is just doing stuff without them and having to say anything. So I think there is no dictator feeling ha here at all. Everyone feels appreciated by him and it's very obvious, you know. He's grateful to have us, you know, as well as we are happy to work with him. Having a team of brilliant minds involved means that I can come into a room and everybody's like, oh man, I'm so psyched. And you're like, okay, great. Let's make explosion sounds. This guy can make an explosion. This can happen. This can happen. Go. And so now it's like my creative mind is um, not only unleashed in a way that is rooted in a type of creative freedom that I've always been looking for, but also nonchalant in a way that allows me to let it go at the end of the day. I gotta get out of these jammies, it's been nine days. <laughs>